Yep. I'm going to talk about today about how digital is transforming politics and elections. And now think about it. The digital world is transforming the world around us. How we shop, how we gather information, how we connect with friends, how we maintain them, how we find love, things, how we spend time. This is all happening in a digital world and it has turned our world upside down in the last couple of years. Now, things which used to be dumb and disconnected have become wired and very much smart. Cars, buildings, and even your own body. You wear wearables which inform you how much you have walked. You are greeted by Alexa when you come home, and for some, Siri is their own girlfriend. So that's something which is happening in this digitalized world. And if we think about uh, politics for a second, we're gonna see all around the globe in 60 seconds, while I have just talked, 150 million emails have been sent, 2.4 billion search inquiries on Google have been placed and one million Tinder swipes has happened. So this is what happened in digitalized area. And now when we see what's going on all around the globe in the digital field, we have to ask ourselves, is politics the dinosaur which is basically our uh, not connected to this digital chains, or is also digital transforming politics and elections? And this is what I want to bring forward today. And I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's something what is today on the display. And obviously, there are always things around that. This is the sound from the Western. But I'm going to talk about these three things. L let's kick off with the good thing. The good thing is there is more information out there. Today, every citizen can research any information which he's interested in, specifically when it comes down to political aspects. He, c he can compare. There are even tools out there who can help them to make informed decision. In Germany, it's called the Valomat, where you can check out what your own policies are aligned to uh, your uh, political belief system. But there are different things out there as well. For example, that uh, today, uh, politicians tend to communicate more clearly with their uh, respected peers. And uh, what you're going to find is internet is becoming the primary news source when it comes to getting political information. And not just for the millennials, also for all other age groups. And what you're going to see in this picture here, this is an Indian suburb. And this is an event which is held by Narendra Modi, which is the Prime Minister of India. But is he talking to these people mano a mano? in person? No, he's not. He is talking with a 3D hologram display of himself giving a speech, and he gave this 3,000 times uh, in over India. So what happened was, people who usually would never had the chance to get the information from a politician directly, had the chance to at least get in a tiny little town the prime minister talking directly to him. So digital is changing, uh, is changing uh, the information, how we receive it, and it comes as no wonder that 30 to 40 percent in industrialized uh, democracies, um, internet is now the primary news source for political information. And that's the first thing, the good thing. Second good thing is we're going to find more communication happening. And that happens from the Arab Spring, where young people had the chance to connect with their peers, to con communicate with their peers, to set up demonstrations, to set up rallies, and it doesn't end there. I mean, if you check out the uh, uh, revolution or the demonstration in Venezuela just around this year, you also could follow it on Instagram and you could see what's happening on the streets and you can connect and could go there. So there's a lot of 
communication going on there. And this second thing, the second good thing, this communication leads to better informed uh, decision making and it forces politicians to reach out to citizens more directly. You're going to see this by Twitter, you're going to see this on different means of, uh, of communication. And just taking one example, 2.4 billion emails have been sent by both political uh, by both presidential campaigns in the 2016 US race, 2.5 billion. This is direct communication and it, it take, it's taken even further. If you take uh, President uh, Macri in Argentina, he is taking you on a Facebook Live at a G20 behind the scenes video. So this helps you to get into the communication mix of politics. And then there's a third Good thing, obviously, what you want to have is digital helps you to participate. And we have seen that by scientific research all over the globe, formal politics and the participation of people are decreasing. But online is bringing them back into the game. People participate by either leaving a comment on Facebook, by connecting with their friends, by sharing an article, doing things like that, and even doing online petitions. It's an easy, accessible way. And this is what transformation means. It helps you to make your life easier, also in the political field. And it not just is in the online sphere, it also happens offline. Here you see a picture from Malaysia. People went door to door talking to people, and when they got the request on information they needed, they used an app and sent it back into the headquarters so the information could be, uh, could be go back to the citizens if he requested certain information. So that's the interconnectedness which is happening between the online and the offline field. We see high tech with high touch, and that's something which is increasing more participation. And if you check out the numbers, you're gonna find that it even goes a step further. In Estonia, you can vote already online. And now if you think this is just a niche business, no, it's not. In Estonia, over 30% cast their vote online. And it's not just the millennials like you. These are all people. And for example, 55 plus, there we have a participation rate which comes close to 30% already. So there you're gonna see three good things more information, more communication, and more participation. Digital is helping politics. But there's obviously also the bad thing. Bad thing is the filter bubble. You are communicating in your newsfeed due to likes and algorithms, basically to your own opinion and to your own peers. It's uh, echoing you back and forth, so you end up in an echo chamber where you see in your newsfeed a reality which is actually not the reality which is happening out there. And this is what uh, just has been uh, told about in the talk before. Populism is happening because a lot of people think that the reality they see in their newsfeed on Facebook is actually the real reality, but it's not. And this leads that in these echo chambers where their opinions bounce back and forth, they lead to hate speech. And it's a second development which I think is a bad thing and we have to address that. And finally, uh, a colleague of mine, researcher Tabea Wilke, found for the uh, German federal, federal uh, election that 22% of the tweets, political tweets, have, have come from machines, from social bots in the final weeks. So what's happening is we are not just having filter bubbles where information bounces back and forth based on your own uh, echo chamber. We are not just having hate speech where people resonate with their opinion like AFD, like uh, uh, Le Pen or like Duterte in Philippines or like in Venezuela, Maduro. You're also going to find that uh, machine learning try to manipulate your opinion and try to uh, rephrase reality. And this is a bad thing. Okay, that's a bad thing, but here's the ugly. The ugly thing is obviously that, uh, here's the ugly. The ugly thing is that we have fake news out there. 
These fake news are not just like try to rephrase reality by bouncing back opinions. It basically leads to l pure lies which try to be rephrased as truth. And that's something where you really could find that fake news is taking really aim in the digital field. And this is changing politics. Take, check this out. The top 20 election stories in the US in 2016 in the hottest cycle after September. More Americans have liked or commented on fake stories than actually on real stories from mainstream media, from New York Times, Washington Post, CNN. This must be troublesome for us because it basically means if one million Americans like that the Pope Francis is endorsing Donald Trump and believe that this is really true, I really have a question what's happening with humanity, all right? So that's something where we really have to be sharp-minded here. And then, besides fake news, there's a second ugly thing I want to raise the attention of yours. It's data. And I have nothing against big data. I really believe that data can help us to make better informed decisions. But it has to be transparent. And all around the globe, what we're going to see is that political campaigns, politicians, try to grab personalized information, voter information, use consumer data to enhance these, take your digital footprint to see what is your communication behavior, mix it all together and profile every one of you individually, micro-target you. And that's something where I at least believe we have to be more transparent and we have to be more clear about it if we want to see that this transformation comes to a positive meaning. And here just one example. 200 million Americans have been stored in the databases of the Democrats and of the Republican Party. In the crucial battleground states, for each individual voter exist 5,000 individual data points. If I know what you read, what, where you communicate, if I know what your behavior is, I can tailor made my message to you. And this raises the question, is the voter picking the candidate or is the candidate picking the voter? And that's something which, in my opinion, is an ugly part of digital transformation. Now. If we think about that, there's a good, there's a bad, there's an ugly thing. Why do I think still digital is transforming politics to the better? Because I believe technology ultimately is good at simulating, but it's bad at being. And technology is actually the how we change things. But politics should be about the why we change something. And therefore, we need clear rules. Therefore, we have to send a message to the big platforms and companies. We need clear standards and regulations. Therefore, we need freedom and transparency. And if this takes root, and this is a political approach, then we're going to see more examples than this. And this is Malala. You might have heard the story. She started with 11 years old. In Pakistan, she set up a blog. She was blogging as an 11-year-old girl about the situation in her country. She was writing about education. And then Pakistani Taliban shot her. She barely made it alive, and today, she is not just a special envoy to the United Nations, she also won a Nobel Peace Prize. And I believe in a political world, in a digitalized political world, no story goes unheard, no story goes untold. This ultimately leads to more freedom, it leads to more empowerment, 
and it leads to a better world. And that's what politics is all about. And uh, that's why I like to share this thought with you. Thank you very much.